get the technology for auto tune or something. Okay, so hey guys, it is me, Serene Sorrow Imagey, as I stand a fight, and I'm back with more Batman Arkham Knight. So today. So today I decided to do something a little different. I um uh, I, I decided to do something a little different today, and this will be like the intermission episode, which will probably be no, which I think will probably end up being a little bit shorter than you know the past several sets. The last set was crazy, as you can probably tell from all of this. Like, okay, so, like, it, oh my god, it's crazy, like, um, you know, stuff is happening, and then, um, we went to the movie stu studios, because Robin was apparently getting hurt, it's not in your head, bruh, you can hear it, but yeah, um, so we went to save Robin, that, at that time, is Tim Drake, who, for some reason, I'm getting, like, he looks like, to me, he looks like he's about roughly 18 at the oldest. And then we see Harley Quinn return, so, and then we have the whole Joker mad this crap where he has, where he has, you know, three people that end up, you know, being, in, that were injected by this Joker toxin blood thing that happened all the way back in Arkham City. And then, and then we, 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 uh, we got them. But one of them died. And, yeah, it was just a whole horde of insanity. Although I think the funniest one, I think, was that Johnny guy, and that was the guy who died. But it was really funny, because his segment was just, you know, because then there was a hallucination. There was a hallucination uh, where he turned out to be the Joker, who was singing, and he's not a bad singer. But I, but I'm curious to know how did that Johnny guy actually sound like? Like, did he sound really bad? <laughs> because if I remember correctly, I think Robin said that what's his face? Um. That even Alfred sings better than that. <laughs> uh, and then the whole, you know, calling them golden tonsils, that still is sending me. But today, I'm going to go ahead and do, like I said, do an intermission episode. Just, I don't expect it to be super crazy long, but because, uh, oh, and also, after all of that craziness, Stuff with Poison Ivy was happening since, of course, uh, you know, in this case, Poison Ivy kind of acts like an anti-hero, which is a very interesting take for her. But then that crap happens, and then a cloud burst. Look at this. Like, this dead act reminds me of, uh, you know, Batman, I mean, not Bat, with, uh, Spider-Man's hallucination with the, with the, uh, Scorpion Venom thing and that happened right, you know, so we had to stay above ground and so this is the ki case, except it's completely like cloud burst with fear gas, which is setting people in a frenzy, which is terrifying, I ain't gonna lie, like this is a whole act horror movie and who knows if Poison Ivy could, pro could possibly have died. I don't know, do you think, I don't know. And now I have questions on whether Poison Ivy might have died. Probably so. She probably might have died. Which is kind of sad. Because, you know. And that stuff. So anyway, enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and do the intermission bar. Which is, yeah. So I know my main objective, which I'll do the next uh, set, the next episode to, uh is to destroy Arkham Knight Cloudburst Tank to, and by that I mean to interrogate Simon Stagg to find a way to defeat the Cloudburst Tank. 
And what I made, you know, the whole defeat the, um, uh... oh yeah, and I think the, the main mission is probably the only thing that you can do at this point, because Cloudburst has covered everything, so you can't even do, so you can't even do, so if you, even if you want to do, like, little side missions or something, you can't do that, because the fear gas and, you know, it's not pretty, I don't know if you can see this, but for some reason, I think I see a... Maybe it's not a boss. I don't know. Oh, you have three upgrade points. Uh, there's riddles and jizz. Uh, you have three upgrade points at this point, which I haven't really done much of yet. But I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I haven't looked up Gotham City Story? Is that the new thing? Okay. Okay, so we have, you know, so we still have an ample amount of characters yet to be, yet to be unlocked, but I'll go ahead and, and look at the characters we have now, and then, um, should anything come later on, uh, should any more come later on, then, then, uh, maybe I'll probably do more. So first off, I'm going to start, um, <laughs> I'm going to start with Aaron Cash. Okay, so, he have your, um, I didn't mean for that. So you have your information, the bio, and attributes. Okay, so we have this information, Aaron Cash, who, yeah, real name is Aaron Cash, his occupation is a GCPD officer, he's based in Gotham City, he has brown eyes, black hair, <laughs> nice, <laughs> six feet tall, which is freaking tall, I ain't gonna lie, although to be fair, <laughs> that's pretty freaking tall, I ain't gonna lie, it's a little, I guess in some ways can be a little bit intimidating, but whatever. And he is 200 pounds, yeah, we've seen the whole, you know, I mean, we went over the, the bio stuff where we see the looks, the weight, and all that shit all the way back in Arkham Asylum. We saw that shit. <laughs> and his first appearance, as in his first actual appearance, which, uh, I mean, and I like how this, you know, includes, you know, stuff from comics and that. His, uh, Aaron Cash's first appearance was in Arkham Asylum Living Hell, uh, issue one in July 2003. Jeez, that's a long time ago. Okay, so here's his bio. A Gothamite through and through, Aaron Cash has spent his entire working life serving the city's law enforcement and security services. He rose to become one of the most senior, uh, senior respected guards at Arkham Asylum, which was also where he suffered a violent attack by Killer Croc, resulting in the loss of his hand and a long-standing hatred of the villainous creature. We even went through that in Arkham Asylum. Man, oh man, I love some of these callbacks, you know, where you call back to some of that stuff. He is a trusted friend of both Batman and Commissioner Gordon, who's who, following the closure of Arkham City, reinstated him back to GCPD, where he started his career. And his attributes is missing the left hand, which, um, I don't know. I don't, I think I haven't really seen, but I know, like, in the first game in Arkham Asylum, he had a hook for a hand or something like that. Which was kind of a reference to, uh, to, uh, uh, Captain Hook. I, I was, I was missing the name for a second. But, you know, the crocodile and Captain Hook thing, you know, that happened in, uh, Peter Pan. There, there's a little reference that's happening here. That's what a lot of people seem to, you know, draw back to. And, uh, proficiency, okay, next, next attribute is proficiency with, with firearms a great physical strength. Mmm. So that is Aaron Cash for you guys.
Okay, next up we have Albert King, who was the final, who was the uh, final mini, uh, the final kind of boss who we faced when we had to get the, when we had to get all those guys, uh, when we had to get those three guys who were, you know, who were supposedly used uh, to to be injected with Joker's blood or something like that, you know, the whole after the whole toxin insanity, whatever. Okay, so his name is Albert King. He uh, his occupation is a heavyweight boxer, based in Gotham City. He has brown eyes, black hair. Oh yeah, and that would be uh for some reason. I think he was a gorilla. He looked like a gorilla in my part. <laughs> At least in my mind. And he, he is uh, 6 feet 7 inches tall. Pretty tall. But then again, compared to... Then I feel like the whole 6 feet tall seems average for most wrestlers. <laughs> Jeez. Louise. Okay. And he weighs 284 pounds, and his first appearance was Batman Arkham Knight, June 2015. That being this game, this very game. Because some of these guys made their first appearance in this game completely. And then, of course, you hear, you know, appearances of other characters from various other parts, including comics, like I mentioned earlier. Okay, Albert King, a.k.a. the Gotham Goliath, is a legendary prize fighter with the most con the consecutive knockouts since records to began. Since records began. Days before his testimonial fight, King checked into Gotham General for a routine procedure only to become infected with Joker's mutated blood. That's what I was talking about earlier. Hospitalizing his entire family in a, in a fit of rage, King appears to have taken on more violent and sadistic aspects of Joker's personality. Oh! <laughs> okay, and his attribute is a highly proficient fighter, superhuman strength, and uncontrollable rage. Sounds like a flesh pound from Killing Floor, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we have uh, Alfred Pennyworth. Yes, you saw, you saw Alfred. His real name is Alfred Pennyworth. He is, uh, his occupation, he's the butler. He's based in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, gray hair, which was formerly black. But since he's aging, yeah, the gray hair is coming. He is six feet tall and weighs 160 pounds. And his first appearance was in Batman issue 16. If, uh, that was April to May of 1943. Back when, you know... The Batman comics were, you know, were kind of first around. Okay, and I was way, I mean, I wasn't even born at that time. Okay, I might have mentioned it before, but if I haven't, I will throw that out to you. But I'm a 90s kid, but yeah. Okay. Here we, here we have his bio. After a varied career, Alfred Pennyworth was employed as the Wayne family's butler. When first his parents were killed, Alfred raised a young orphan and reluctantly aided him in his quest to become the Batman. Alfred's many skills, ranging from cooking to combat medicine, makes him Batman's uh, staunchest ally. And his formal and his and his formal demeanor, almost a former, uh, helps ground the Dark Knight and deflect those who might otherwise suspect Bruce Wayne's true identity. See, and you know, you notice, know, like, you, you know, I feel like, you know, Batman and, uh, Spider-Man are one of those few superheroes who will, you know, who seem to, like, not want to disclose, like, their actual identities. You know, who don't want to disclose their identities to, you know, the public, or, you know, kind of vice versa for anyone that, you know, that stuff. It's interesting, so, there you go. Okay, so now his attributes is a skilled actor, trained in emergency medical techniques, proficiency with mechanical and computer systems, expert in domestic sciences, and unflappable manner. Wow. <laughs> okay, we have the Arkham Knight. Oh. 
Yep, we have Mr. Arkham Knight himself. Which, for some reason, this whole game feels like it... I don't know. I feel like for some reason this is like, you know... This is almost like the Winter Soldier of the Batman Arkham series. But not, but not played out in a very well manner. Um... Yeah. You know, I feel like, it, I don't know, for some reason it feels like it would be Winter Soldier. Just not very good quality. Just not the quality. Just not at that high quality, to be honest. I'm just repeating myself. His real name is unknown because we don't know anything about him. Other than for some reason, he, knew, he knows Batman so freaking well. Probably knows him more than the Joker. You know what I mean? You know, he seems to know him, even though they, even though, you know, it's like before, they had no, they had no previous interaction. It's just, what the frick is happening? He is a military commander, unknown, ba based in unknown, unknown eye color, unknown hair color, and, uh, but height is six feet tall and 200 pounds. Okay. <laughs> And first appearance is in Batman Arkham Knight in June 2015. That's this game. Okay, the Ark. Okay, the Arkham Knight's bio. Based besides the discoveries of a militia trade facility in South Africa, virtually nothing is known of the Arkham Knight until his arrival in Gotham, where he quickly earned himself a fearless reputation amongst the city's leading criminals. Working together with Scarecrow, he has a sworn to kill Batman and will stop at nothing until he is dead. Whoa, okay. And his attributes is expert knowledge of Batman's tactics and fighting style. Yeah, he knows Batman pretty freaking well. Probably more than, the, like I said, probably more than the Joker. Which is saying something. <laughs> although, although he ain't. <laughs> something telling me. Something be telling me like, bro, get a chill pill. Highly skilled military tech, uh, tactician. I hope I said that right. Robotically synthesized voice. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> At least Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier, didn't have that weird voice. He's just a dude. <laughs> okay, and now we have Batman, the main protagonist of this awesome game. Well, <laughs> I was being sarcastic. I mean, I, I mean, I'm gonna say it's not, it's not. Super bad, but it definitely ain't at the level to where you know the past you know Arkham games have been, which is kind of sad. I think I heard there one of the writers ended up leaving. His name was Paul. I don't remember his last name, but he left, and I think he was probably one of the best writers to come out of the Arkham series. And seeing how the writers seemed to you know seemed to you know go on this game, like you saw in the beginning where uh. When Scarecrow warned people about about what he was gonna do, and he so in a way he basically gave the Gotham citizens a chance to escape before he carry on with his plan, which is honestly one of the most hilarious things he has done. Like, bro, <laughs> like, bro, you just gave you just gave the citizens a freaking chance to escape. You're an idiot. Okay, enough of my ranting. Real name Bruce Wayne. Occupation, world's greatest detective, based in Gotham City, has blue eyes, black hair, six foot two, six foot two inches, yeah, six foot two, and is 210 pounds, and first appearance is Detective Comics, issue number 27, May 1939. Ooh, that was a long time ago. Oh, man, y'all. Bro, I ain't even gonna lie. Okay. When his parents were gunned down in front of him, young Bruce Wayne resolved to rid Gotham City of the criminal element that took their lives. He trained extensively to achieve mental and physical perfection. In addition to mastering martial arts, detective techniques, and criminal psychology. Yeah, so world's greatest detective. Like, you know, you could say he's like, you know, he's like the superhero version of Sherlock Holmes. Sorry, Sherlock, you don't match up to Batman. Batman's my favorite, uh, favorite DC superhero. 
not gonna lie, of all time. Like, he's the best. And, uh, and truthfully, and probably, you know, one of my top favorite superheroes of all time. But probably one of my top five favorite superheroes of all time. You know, along with, you know, along with two others that I will definitely name. Scarlet Witch and Captain America. And I have reasons. Okay, for that. Dressing as a bat to prey on criminals' fears, Batman fights crimes with the aid of specialized gadgets and vehicles operating out of the secret bat cave below Wayne Manor. Following the events of Arkham City, many of Gotham's citizens are convinced that Batman broke his defining role by killing his arch nemesis, the Joker. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, we all remember that. I mean, I know, because, you know, the Joker died back all the way in Arkham City. And that was something. <laughs> man, oh man. <laughs> By the, okay, and I just, I just thought of something here, you know. Once I actually start that Let's Play of Arkham City, every, like, right at the beginning of when I start the video, I'm just gonna be thinking, I don't wanna drown <laughs> you, you know. Drowning You by Daughtry, because that one came out from the Arkham City album, and that's the first song I think of when I hear, when I, you know, when I hear that game. And plus, since the game is, is the best out of the series, makes it that much better. Alright, that's enough for me, for that one. Okay, his attributes. Trained to physical and mental peak, arsenal of gadgets, feeds, his <laughs> arsenal of gadgets, Vehicles and advanced technology, inventor, detective, genius, level, and flex. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's a pretty good detective when you think about it. Expert in most known forms of martial arts, and trained in all aspects of criminology. Like, dang, this guy has worked his butt off. I mean, sure, he was born in a rich act family, but he worked his butt off for this. Although I still find it funny how, I still find it hilarious, I don't even know if he actually does, but it's really funny how, like, every, per almost every suit that he's had in the games and that, and even, like, in the games, always show defined six-pack abs, and I don't know why, because that makes me laugh. I don't know why. I don't know if he actually has abs under that, but if you want to answer that for yourself, go ahead. But other than that... I don't know. We'll leave that a mystery. That's a good mystery that we should uncover together. Okay, next up we have Bruce Wayne, who is practically the same as Batman, but but because I'm gonna read it, I'm, why not? <laughs> okay, so we have a uh, real name is Bruce Wayne. He is, his occupation is a CEO and a uh, philanthropist. I hope I pronounced that correctly. In a way, he's almost like, he's almost like Iron Man, but probably better than Iron Man. Okay, if you were to, if you were to put, uh, put Batman and Iron Man against each other, and if I had to choose which one was the better one, I'd easily choose Batman. And no, I'm not saying because Batman's more serious, because Batman, obviously, it seems to be a bit more, a lot more serious compared to Iron Man slash Tony Stark. But I think, um... You know, I think Bruce's character arc is far better, in my opinion. Okay. And he is based in Gotham City. He has, and uh, his stats are the same, but I don't care. I'm reading it anyway. He has blue eyes, black hair, 6'2", two, 210 pounds, and first appearance is Detective Comics has, uh, issue 27, May 1939. Okay, so... Okay. Here's his bio. Born into the wealthy Wayne family, Bruce had, Bruce Wayne had an idyllic childhood. Had an idyllic childhood, but after witnessing his parents' violent murder in Crime Alley, and uh, Crime Alley, Bruce dedicated Bruce dedicated his life to battling criminals. He circled the globe for years, training his mental and physical abilities to their peak. Gotham City welcomed him home, not knowing the high society's favorite billionaire. Play, uh, billionaire Playboy is also the Batman. <laughs> Following the Arkham City de uh, de <laughs> debacle and the prison sus uh, sus 
subsequent closure, Bruce Wayne once again came into Gotham's rescue, footing the footing to the bill for its extensive redevelopment. So yeah. So yeah, I feel like Bruce Bruce is kind of better than Tony, so let's just put it there. Okay, and his attributes are billionaire playboy by day, Batman by night, Gotham's most eligible bachelor. <laughs> it's the most valuable bachelor. <laughs> what what's gonna go next for him? Is he gonna be on the bachelor? <laughs> he's gonna be that's him. He's the next thing he's gonna be on the bachelor. I bet ya. <laughs> Man, oh man. <laughs> like, yo, he's gonna be on The Bachelor and we're just gonna be laughing away. Like, it is the funniest thing ever. Okay, so, next thing, I am the uh, Catwoman. Yeah, who, you know, you know, uh, you know how I was saying how, you know, it seems like Cat, not Catwoman, uh, Poison Ivy seemed to be playing like the anti-hero in this story. In this, you know, in this, in this game, seems like that's the case with Catwoman, and that sort of stuff. You know, you get that stuff. Okay, so here's Catwoman's stats. Her real name is Selena Kyle. She is a professional thief, uh, based in Gotham City. Has green eyes, black hair, uh, five foot seven, and 125 pounds, which in some ways makes her look as skinny as a stick. Except she has boobs. And then her first appearance is Batman, issue number one, spring 1940. Okay. Okay, an orphan who learned to survive on the mean streets of Gotham, Selena Kyle turned to thievery to survive. Determined to do it with style, she learned martial arts and trained in gymnastics to perfect her skills. Her criminal activities are tempered by a reluctant altruism making her an, an, an inconstant villain and occasional hero. So yeah, but basically on a whole, she's an anti-hero in a way. She maintains a complicated adver uh, adversarial <laughs> relationship with Batman that frequently turns flirtatious and occasionally romantic. Yeah, and if you guys saw, like, the, if you guys saw, uh, like, the Dark Knight Rise and the, that stuff, you know, it was far obvious that Cat Catwoman acted very much like a hero. Yeah. Because you're gonna see all of that. Although, in, like, some things like, like the Batman, the Lego Batman game, she was portrayed as a villain, and, yeah, that stuff. Little is known about her movements since the closure of Arkham City, uh, of Arkham City, but a string of high-profile bulgari suggests she is still at large in Gotham. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so basically her thing is whips and cat suits. And yeah, all that good stuff. Okay, and uh, her attributes. She is trained gymnast. She's a trained gymnast and athlete. Expert hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, combatant. Highly skilled with whips. Unrivaled stealth capabilities. And obsessed with stealing famous and well-protected items. And well-protected items. And, um, I know some, I remember somewhere that the Lego games had her be in Arkham Asylum, which, yeah, a lot of people said, no, that's not, that's not the case. Because she is not insane, unlike, unlike half of the, the insane criminals. Yeah. So here we go, we have Christina Bell, who was the first chick that, who we saved in the last set. Okay, so, yeah, she was the first chick. No, she wasn't the one that died. It was the second guy that died. Um, yeah. God, I'm so sorry. Anyway, so her real name is Christina Bell. She, her occupation is executive director in Queen Industries. Based in Star City, has blue eyes, brown hair, 5'9", and is 145 pounds. First appearance in Batman Arkham Knight, June 2015. Okay. After, success, after a successful career in, in finance, Christina recently joined the board of directors at Queen Industries in Star City. During a blood transfusion following a miscarriage, Christina was exposed to Joker's Titan-infected blood. 
On return to work, she took a knife to a board meeting and brutally murdered 11 senior executives, carving smiles on her victims' faces. Christina has adopted several uh, facets of facets of Joker's personality, notab uh, notably his obsession with Batman. Oh, girl. <laughs> okay, her attributes, expert business acumen, violent obsession with Batman, and highly unpredictable. Oh, man. Okay, and Johnny Charisma. That was the guy who ended up who ended up getting killed after, you know, you rest after we stopped that, uh, the, um, after we stopped Albert King. Okay, Johnny Charisma. Okay, so his real name is Jonathan Brown. His occupation is a singer, which, according to Robin, he is terrible. He's a terrible singer. I would like to know curiously, like, how exactly he would sound like as a singer. Because we got Joker as the singer, which Joker wasn't that bad. <coughs> so I'm just going to assume Johnny is awful. Like he would probably be so bad it would make it would make even the old judges of American Idol just scream in agony because of how terrible it is. My God, he is based in Gotham City. Has green eyes, brown hair. Um. He is five foot ten and 172 pounds, and first appearance was in Batman Arkham Knight, June 2015. Okay, and Jonathan Brown, aka Johnny Charisma, made a name for himself on the cabaret Alice circuit before hitting the big time when he was discovered by a national talent show. Charisma is no stranger to controversy with a string of drug offenses and a DUI. A DUI. Yikes. But his assault on a groupie was uncharacteristically violent. Since his infection, uh, Charisma has been displaying signs of mellow, uh, megalomania with his behavior echoing the sadistic uh, showmanship of the Joker. <laughs> I'm deceased, yo. He is a trained vocalist. How? I wonder. Because if Robin says he's bad. Oh. Now I wonder, how the heck does Robin slash Tim know what a good singer is? <coughs> I wonder. He is a narcissist and a baritone. That is not a baritone I want to be with. That's a baritone I puke in his face. Bro. <laughs> okay. We have Jason Todd. Thanks for showing us this. Okay, so his real name is Jason Todd. He was one of the, he was one of the, he, I think he, yeah, he was a Robin. Okay, so his name is Jason Todd. A, his occupation is a crime fighter, but now he's deceased, based in Gotham City. He has blue, he has blue eyes, brown and black hair, six foot, 200 pounds, first appearance in Batman Issues, 357, June 1983. Wow. Okay. Raised in the slums of Gotham City, Jason was the son of a petty criminal and a drug-addicted mother. When his father was in prison and his mother died, Jason found himself struggling to survive, stealing parts, car parts for cash. This led to Batman discovering Jason in an alleyway, trying to steal the tires off the Batmobile. Bruh, come on! Batman took him in and trained him to replace Dick Grayson as Robin. While Jason didn't share Dick, uh, Dick's cheerful enthusiasm and acrobatic abilities, the life on the streets had him had made him tough and fiercely driven. Frustrated at Batman's unwillingness to kill the Joker in spite of his heinous crimes, J Jason set out to do it himself, only to get himself captured, tortured, and killed by the Clown Prince, leaving Batman riddled with guilt. Wow, okay. Exponent, okay, his attributes, ex uh, exponent of the martial arts, proficient detective capabilities, and explosive temper. Whoa, whoa, did I talk about a guy with anger issues? <laughs> what the heck? Okay, I find this hilarious because this happens in every bad boy good girl story. 
You know, we're the bad boy. We're the boy, the love interest, the guy, the guy love interest that always has anger issues. And it's so annoying. It's like, can we get a guy who actually, you know, you know can keep his freaking temper? My God, is that hard to do? Okay, here we have, here we have Henry Adams. Okay. <coughs> okay. His real name is Henry Adams. Principal. He his occupation is a principal slash teacher. He is based in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, white, formerly blonde hair. Because yeah, he's aging. Five foot nine. That's tight, and his weight is 160 pounds. And his first appearance was in Ark Batman Arkham Knight, June 2015. Okay. His bio. Highly respected principal of the esteemed Ma uh, McCallum Academy. <laughs> oh, except for Simon McCallum. Okay. Henry Adams was, a, was exposed to Joker's blood during a routine treatment at Gotham General. Displaying none of the symptoms experienced by the other victims, Henry's immunity could be a key to developing a cure. Though, in, though initially cooperative, Henry's patience is wearing thin and he's desperate to return home to his family. Okay, and his attributes is principal of the Callum Academy and professor of biology. Okay, so now you have Harley Quinn who had, who, you know, who had returned to the last set. Which, like I said, was a crazy episode. I ain't even gonna lie. Okay. <coughs> okay, so we have... So her real name, we have her real name is Dr. Darlene F. Quinzel. She is a professional criminal, that's her occupation, based on Gotham, Gotham City. Gotham, what the heck? Gar. <laughs> her eye color is blue, she has blonde hair, she is 5'7 and 140, 140 pounds. Yeah, so. So, I guess you may call her thick if y'all want. Okay, and her first appearance is in Batman, Batman Adventures, issue 12 in September 1993. Okay, so an Arkham, an Arkham Asylum psychiatrist assigned to treat the Joker, Dr. Harleen Quinzel instead became obs uh, obsessively fixated on her patient, but, uh, believing herself to be in love with him. She helped him escape and took on her own criminal identity as Harley Quinn, a violent and unpredictable felon who whose only motivation was achieving the Joker's approval. Because of his cruel and uh, mercurial nature, this in some ways has made her just another of his victims, albeit a very dangerous one. Since her ill-fated attempt to avenge her lover's death in Arkham City, Harley is rumored to have assumed control over Joker's criminal gang and begun plotting another attack on the man she holds responsible, Batman. Okay, and I'm gonna be... Okay, so the whole, you know, yes, she wants to be with the Joker and that. And people believe that they were both in love. In love. But the truth is, it's very one-sided. It's on her end to where she believes that she's in love with him. But on the other end, Joker abuses Harley. This is not a, this is not a romantic relationship. They are not in love. This is a toxic, abusive relationship. And... Uh, Okay, you know, because even I think one point, at one point, I think in one of the, uh, one of the, and I think it was in one part and then the animated series or something, the Joker said he would bomb Gotham, when he would nick, uh, nuke Gotham City, and he would leave Harley behind. No joke! That is not a healthy relationship. These two, you know, they, you know, they are not a healthy relationship. Harley, in actuality, would be more of a tragic anti-hero rather than, you know, just a typical villain. She is who I consider, yeah, who I consider a tragic anti-hero. You know, because, you know, she's, she's basically been abused by Joker, even though she is, even though she convinces herself that she is in love with the Joker. But truthfully, it is not. It, that is not the case. He is abusive to her and uh, all that stuff. Okay, and the reason why I'm trying, the reason why I'm saying this is because, you know, because for those of y'all that are going to still throw in the narrative that, oh, that it's romance, 
It's not romance, y'all. Take a hint. It ain't romance. Sit down. Please, dear God. Sit down. Okay, and it's just like with Raylo. Raylo is not a good ship. It is a it is a toxic abusive abusive relationship. And it's like Edward and Bella. That's also toxic and abusive. That's like the same thing with Anastasia, with Anastasia and Christian. Not a good relationship at all. Abusive and that stuff. And then and then um, in a more recent case, Harden and Tessa from After. Yeah, I said it loud and clear. Let's move on to Harley's attributes. Her, uh, her surprising strength and stamina, her superior gymnastic skills, and total disregard for human life. Alrighty. <coughs> we have Jim Gordon now. Okay, his real name is James W. Gordon. He is a police commissioner. He is based in Gotham City. His, uh, he has blue hair. White hair, which is formerly brown, but since he's aging, that stuff. He is six foot, 180 pounds, and first appearance in Detective Comics issue 27, May 1939. All right, a uh, police commissioner, James W. Gordon, dedicated his career to cleaning up the corruption of Go in the Gotham City Police Department, a goal he has come a long way towards accomplishing. He has been uh, equally tough on crime and in the pursuit of making Gotham City safe. For all of its citizens, Gordon has forged an un, un uh, excuse me. Gordon has forged an uneasy alliance with Gotham's other top crime fighter, the mysterious vigilante known as Batman. <clears throat> Since the closure of Arkham City and the death of the Joker, Gordon has overseen a period of relative calm in Gotham City, with crime steadily declining. On the back of these successes. Many see Gordon as a prime candidate to become the city's next mayor. Ooh, yo, this is gonna be good. Okay, his attributes is an experienced police officer, trained criminologist, proficient uh, proficient in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and expert marksman. You. Okay. So now we're looking at the Joker. His real name is unknown. His occupation is a professional criminal who is deceased. Yeah, very much deceased. Um, based in Gotham City, has green eyes and green hair, six foot tall, and is 160 pounds. And her his first appearance was in Batman, uh, Batman issue one, the spring 1940. <coughs> okay. All right, Batman's art, uh, arch nemesis, the style, the self-styled clown prince of crime, has the capacity for incredible violence and a and a penchant for creating deadly mayhem. Yeah, we've seen that stuff. His death in Arkham City, resulting from an earlier Titan overdose, sent shockwaves through Gotham's underworld, with many holding Batman directly responsible. Despite his jet, despite his death. Joker's le legacy lives when it when it emerges that several people were exposed to his titan infected blood and are now displaying symptoms of a Joker-like personality. What the? <laughs> yeah, so there's a tape from Batman, who basically was, you know, was talking about that stuff. If you guys remember, you know, 
all that stuff, you know, and, and that stuff happened in Arkham City and that. Oh my god. Yeah, I was gonna read his attributes, but then I saw this. I was like, what the heck is that? Oh, it's it's just an audio file. Okay. So, uh, his attributes is an unrepentant homicidal maniac, a surprisingly strong hand-to-hand -hand combatant, unknown past, and employs various deadly weapons, often based on party gag items. So, yeah, he's like... He's like the more deadly life of the party. Uses a fatal toxin that stretches victims' faces into Joker-like grin. Yeah. Talk about the life of a party. Next off, we have Lucius Fox. Oh, and he had that little icon, uh, that little tape icon, which basically means he has an audio tape. The rest of these characters do not. Let's get to Lucius Fox. Okay, his real name is Lucius Fox. Occupation is CEO of Wayne Enterprises. It's based in Gotham City. He has brown hair, black eyes, 5'9", 195 pounds, and the first appearance in Batman issue 307 in January 1979. Okay, his bio. Currently CEO and president of Wayne Enterprises, Lucius Fox is a sought-after is, is sought businessman all over the corporate world and one of Bruce Wayne's closest allies. Fox is, is a shrewd and experienced businessman, entrepreneur, and inventor. Aside from running Wayne Enterprises and the Wayne Foundation, Fox also takes pride in developing weapons, gadgets, vehicles, and armor for Bruce Wayne's alter ego, Batman. Okay, his latest contributions uh, to the Dark Knight's arsenal includes the new Batmobile, a whole new suit, of new and upgraded gadgets. And his attributes are an incredible business acumen, an inventor and entrepreneur, and a warm, friendly, and intensely loyal. Yep, you heard that right. <laughs> okay. Next up we have Dick Grayson, the Nightwing. Ooh. We have Nightwing. Da 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 <laughs> Batwing Alrighty, um Okay, the, his real name is Dick Grayson. He's a crime fighter based in Bloodhaven. He has blue hair. Uh, no, not blue hair. He has blue, blue, excuse me, blue eyes, black hair, six foot, 180 pounds, and his first appearance was in the Tales, the Tales of the Teen Titans, uh, issue, no, issue 44, 1984. Okay. Okay, the youngest of the of a family of acrobats known as the Flying Graysons. Dick Grayson's uh, watched his parents die at the hands of a mafia boss, extorting money for the from the circus. Bruce Wayne adopted the young orphan as his ward and subsequently trained him to become his crime fighting partner, Robin. Determined to prove himself and growing weary of the living in Batman's shadow. Grayson moved to Bloodhaven to fight uh, to fight crime under his new name, Nightwing. Ah, <laughs> okay. He he kind of has a cute little smile. He's like got that you know kind of cute little smirk. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of cute. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's just that's just too cute. I like it. Okay, his attributes is trained to fight crime by Batman and a skilled acrobat and master martial uh, martial artist. Okay, so next we have Oracle, and who is sadly dead. <laughs> that was, you know, but I'm just, I, I mean, how though that was pretty, like, what the frick were you thinking? Oh, whatever, okay. So her real name is Barbara Gordon, her occupation is an informant. Information broker based in Gotham City has blue eyes, red hair, five foot eleven and hundred and twenty six pounds, and a first appearance in Suicide Squad issue number twenty three in January nineteen eighty nine. Okay, okay. So here we go. The daughter of of uh, the daughter of Gotham City's police commissioner James W. Gordon, Barbara Gordon, fought crime alongside Batman as Batgirl until she was paralyzed from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair. Barbara has since adopted the new identity of Oracle and now supports Batman with her computer expertise. 
proving, providing him with a constant stream of information in the field to aid his battle against crime. And then we have her attributes. I, eidetic memory, recall of everything she sees and reads, extensive headquarters in Gotham City's clock tower, high level hacking and computer skills, and remains skilled with, with escrima, sticks, and batterings. Dang, girl. But yeah, she's not deceased. Okay, we have the penguin. <laughs> he's, he's definitely a fat bloke. Like, yo, he's... he's <laughs> at least he's not, like, you know, to the point where he's way, you know, overweight to the point you could be on my 600 pound life. I make, I've been making that joke in the Killing Floor Let's Play with the bloat. My god, okay. His real name is Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot. He is a black market rec uh, racketeer based in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, black hair, which, yeah, appears to be balding in some parts. <coughs> uh, he is 4 foot 10, yeah, he's short, and is 175 pounds, and his first appearance is Detective Comics, issue 58, December 1941. <coughs> okay, here we go. The Penguin is an, is an eccentric criminal mastermind known for his shady business de dealings. Born into the wealthy Cobblepot family, Oswald was sent overseas for school, as, for school as a boy. When his family hit hard times, Cobblepot immersed himself in a criminal education on the streets of London. Years later, he reemerged as the Penguin, a black mar market arms dealer in Gotham, facilitating in the illegal uh, financial activities that fund much of the city's underworld. Since his humiliating defeat in Gotham, Gotham City, Penguin has resurfaced supplying arms in Gotham's occupying forces via a front company called North Refrigeration, which we pretty much heard about all, like, a couple sets earlier. <coughs> okay. Man, okay. Criminal and, okay, his attributes are criminal and financial mastermind, expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant, mercilessly cruel and various underworld connections. Okay, and now we have Poison Ivy, who is a villain at most times, and in this game seems to have presented herself kind of like as the anti-hero in a way, so. Okay, and you hear anti-heroes come in more than just rotting in black, y'all. Okay, anti-heroes comic come in all shapes and sizes, and all different types. It's not just broading and black. Uh, yeah. In a way, I think in this game, uh, Poison Ivy seems to, you know, kind of present herself as more like a tragic, uh, more like a tragic anti-hero, especially with, like, her stuff with the Joker and that stuff. Yeah. Okay, her per her real name is Pamela Lillian Ifley. Her occupation is a professional criminal. She is based in Gotham City. She has green eyes, red hair, five foot eight, and 115 pounds. First appearance was in Batman issue 181 in June 1966. Okay, uh, Botana's Pamela Isley was transferred by a science experiment gone wrong in a plant-human hybrid. With chlorophyll flowing through her veins instead of blood, she developed a toxic touch and a and a pheromon uh, fueled talent for seduction. <coughs> Dang, girl. Her unique brand of eco-terrorism often puts her in conflict with Batman, whose iron will usually protect him from her seductive powers. <coughs> she was recently captured by Nightwing and, and imprisoned in Bloodhaven until Harley Quinn staged an, aud an, an audacious breakout. And people have, and some people have actually been, like, teasing for Harley and Poison Ivy to actually be together, being lesbians, which actually is a very interesting concept, because the two seem to have interesting chemistry with each other. Um, I know there's a new show called The Harley Quinn or something like that, and you do see that. And then you get to see, you know, kind of Harley's life, you know, you know, where she's, you know, outside of, you know, being that stuff. Oh, and by the way, with Harley Quinn, yeah, 
Um, with Harley Quinn, I guess this might be canon in, like, the whole, and the whole everything about it. But I know, like, in, ba in uh, Birds of Prey, like, she says, I'm a PhD, mother beep. Yeah, I'm, n I'm not saying the other word, okay? I don't, I'm not doing that. Okay, so her attributes are, as in, uh, Poison Ivy's attributes, able to direct the growth of all plant life, plant genes mixed with her DNA, exudes natural pheromones uh, that control victims, skin uh, secretes, um, a deadly toxin, and a patholo uh, pathological drive to protect nature from, hum from humanity. I guess you could say in almost the ways you would probably sympathize with her and, you know, because, you know, consider her an environmentalist, if you will. Okay, we have Two-Face. <coughs> okay, so his real name is Harvey Dent. His occupation, he's a professional criminal. He's based in, he's based in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, brown or gray hair. Um, he is six foot tall, 182 pounds, and first appearance in Detective Comics, um, issue t uh, 66, in August 1942. Okay, District Attorney Harvey Dent was one of Batman's strongest allies in Gotham City until a criminal threw acid in Dent's face, hideously scarring him. The wounds fractured his psyche, and he was reborn to face. Um, psych uh, psychisoid criminal... Uh, mastermind obsessed with duality, his former good luck charm, a two-headed trick silver dollar, was damaged in one side of the, to the attack, and Dent was, and Dent has seized on it as a reflection of his half-scarred visage, visage. He flips it to decide the fates of his victims. In the wake of the Joker's death, Two-Face is rumored to be working alongside other supervillains to bring Gotham to its knees and destroy Batman once and for all. Whoa, bruh. Okay, his attributes. Hideously scarred on half of his face, extremely skilled with his twin, a .45 semi-automatic, um, psychotic obsession with duality, and the number two. Whoa. Which is, raw. yeah, that's not good. The dead defers to his half-scarred coin in choices of life or death. Whoa, that's hella morbid, my dude. Okay, and then we have Simon Stagg, which, by the way, which, uh, by the way, for some reason, I thought he was dead. But from the last said, Batman said that, you know, Batman says, oh no, we need to, we need to, like, go, we need to go get him and, you know, to interrogate him and how to stop the, uh, cloudburst thing. Which, I'm surprised, I'm surprised he would even be alive, possibly, because I thought he was for sure dead. Yeah, I thought he was for sure, for sure dead. Okay, his real name is Simon Stagg. He, uh, his occupation is the CEO of Stagg Enterprises. Whoa, this episode's gonna be long. Is based in Central City. He has blue eyes, white hair, 5'11", 170 pounds, and the first appearance is The Brave and the Bold, issue 57 in January 1965. Okay, a wealthy scientist, a uh, philanthropist, and entrepreneur, Simon Stagg is the founder and CEO of Stagg Enterprises, a company specializing in advanced biomedical research. A self-proclaimed uh, visionary, Stagg has been developing clean energy solutions and a revolutionary airborne in and uh, inoculation technology on board his airship laboratories. In recent years, Stag Enterprises has been accused of human rights vi violations in regards to medical testing on humans. Simon Stag vehemently ref uh, refuted the accusations and his company was cleared of all charges. <coughs> if he actually did, you know, if he actually, you know, did all these, you know, where he basically did these unethical, uh, unethical tests, then he can choke, for all I care. I don't care if he's like the rich guy or something like that, but if he's been doing that unethical stuff, he can choke. Yeah. He is a cunning negotiator, he is, he is unscrupulous, uh, and has a, sound, has a sound business mind. Okay, so we have three more characters to go through.
we have Scarecrow. Oh my god, he's freaking creepy! Ah! Although in Arkham Asylum, like, he had his face, he had his, uh, he had his mouth covered, and yeah, but either way, he's pretty freaking freaky, like, we need to get a whole, <clears throat> we need to get a whole horror movie, a whole DC Batman horror movie, you know, with the Joker, I mean, not the Joker, with the Scarecrow as the main antagonist. Oh my god, that would be the hottest thing ever. Like, man, I would pick that up in a heartbeat. And if you see those, the, his hands, some of his hands are like uh, injections. I remember, I think, in the first, uh, in Arkham Asylum, a lot of people compared, you know, those those hands as like Freddy Krueger. So, basically, in a way, he's like the Freddy Krueger of the Batman, of the Batman universe. Or of the whole DC universe, if you will. Okay, his real name is Jonathan, Jonathan Crane. His occupation is a criminal mastermind and a psychiatrist. Based in Gotham City, he has blue eyes, brown hair. He is six foot, 140 pounds, and the world's, uh, in his first appearance, is world's finest issue number three in September 1941. Okay, the self-proclaimed master of fear, Dr. Jonathan Crane, is an obsessed, uh, obsessive and deranged former psychiatrist who uses a combination of experimental drugs and, psych and psychological tactics to exploit his victims' fears and phobias. Yeah, he's kind of like Freddy Krueger in a way. So, interesting. Except it's more so on the fears, although Freddy kind of more so tackles, like, the fears, but through the dreams and that stuff. Or I guess Scarecrow is kind of similar in a way. <coughs> They're kind of both the same, right? Almost. Probably with a couple differences. Prolonged exposure to his own toxin has rendered jo uh, Scarecrow unable to experience the fear he so desperately craves. The only person who can still elicit, elicit fear from Scarecrow is Batman. Following his attacks on the Dark Knight in Gotham City, Scarecrow was mauled by Killer Croc. <laughs> oh, by the Dark Knight in Arkham Asylum, Scarecrow was mauled by Killer Croc. Rumor has it that he has since reconstructed his face to resemble his iconic mask while plotting his revenge against Batman and Gotham. So yeah, he looks scary. You know, he we need we need a whole act horror story, horror horror, horror story, horror book, horror novel, horror movie or something like that. Horror, you know, you know, that has him as the main antagonist, like, that would be the best thing, that would be one of the best things ever. Okay, he is the master of fear, professor of psychology, and an expert chemist. Whoa, okay, so we have two more characters, and then after that, I think it's safe to say that the episode will have come to its end. Okay, next up we have Robin, who, by the way, and this, and this, this Robin is Tim Drake. Damian Wayne does not come in this case. Okay, so his real name is Tim Drake. His occupation is a student. Is he a college student? For some reason, I don't know, like I've said for so many times, I feel like at he'd at least be 18. If not, if not older, like, you know, say early, maybe mid-twenties. Because he looks fairly young. <clears throat> He is based in, based in Gotham City, he has blue eyes and black hair, 6 foot and 189 pounds. His first appearance is in Batman, Batman issue 436, August 1989. Whoa. Whoa, 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 I am not mean to do that. I hit the wrong button, yo. Okay, here we go. Young Tim Drake was in the audience of the night of the Flying Graysons were murdered. While, where he witnessed Batman leap into the scene. Inspired by Batman's heroics, Tim closely followed the chronicles of Batman of, and Robin, who, by the way, uh, the Robin at the time was, was uh, J uh, Dick Grayson. Eventually de uh, deducing their secret identities using his self-taught uh, detective skills, Tim convinced Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, now Nightwing, that a new Robin was needed in the never-ending battle for justice. Tested by the Dark Knight himself with a grueling training re regime, 
Tim earned the right to become Robin and has since lived up to that name. <laughs> yeah. So he's young. He's a student. I'm going to guess he's probably no older than a college student. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I get the vibe to where he's no older than a college student. He sounds like a college student in my I don't know. When I heard his voice, he sounds he sounds to me like a college student. Yeah, he kind of, in a way, he kind of sounds like a college student. <clears throat> Not that I would really know how he would sound like as a high school student, but he sounds more like a college student to me. Okay. Alrighty, so his attributes is uh, keen detective skills, trained to fight crime by Batman, arsenal of gadgets and advanced technology, and a near genius level intellect. Oh boy. <laughs> And now, finally, we are finishing the episode with the Riddler, who looks like a very unattractive hippie. Who looks like a very awful, <coughs> very awful, un, um, unattractive, disgusting-looking hippie. <laughs> like, he looks like he'd be one of those hippies who would probably be, uh, would probably be parading his butt all around, you know, all around even the weirdest of cities, and even the... And even the people in said weird city, you know, would look at him like, bro, what the frick are you on? Like, what drugs are you on? That's what he looks like in here. And, yeah, he's had, like, various, uh, he seems to have various portrayals, and some are weirder than others. <clears throat> okay, so here we have, uh, his real name is Eddie Nashton, a.k.a. Edward Nigma. Would, you know, he's more so known as Edward Nigma. I remember, I think, in the Lego, in the Lego Batman, in the DC version, the DS version, he was, uh, he was referred to as Edward Nashton, but, he, but in most other things, he's referred to as Edward Nigma. But, the bottom line is, yeah, he's Edward. Okay, so he, his occupation is a professional criminal based in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, brown hair, six foot one. And 183 pounds, and his first appearance was in Detective Comics 140, issue 140 in October 1948. So he's been around for a long time. <clears throat> okay. With an obsessive com uh, compulsive need for attention, Edward Nigma is determined to be the cleverest of Gotham City's criminals, plotting elaborate trails of clues and riddles around his crimes. Batman has proven a worthy opponent, capable of unraveling the Riddler's most intricate plans, but Nigma is dedicated to creating a mystery that will confound the Dark Knight, even if he has to kill someone to do it. Humiliated by Batman on the Arkham Island and again in Arkham City, Nigma is, for, is more determined than ever to make the caped crusader bow before his superior intellect. Yeah, <laughs> consider that. Okay, he has his attributes. He has a genius intellect, driven to test others by leaving clues to his crimes, and compulsive need for attention and validation. That is, you know, that for you. Whoa, whoa, hold up. Bone strip bear beneath us warm a warning light. Pay ahead. See fears not to feel his bite. Bro, what the frick? The ri this riddle will be, will be revealed when the time is right. A cash thing. Boy, if you don't. Okay, so a riddle victim. Save a rioter with a bomb planted in his skull. Oh my god, that's morbid, bro. I'm 
make a joke and say it's that writer guy that uh, Vicky mentioned in that um, in that uh, messages thing when I first entered the Wayne Tower. Boy, if you don't! Okay, instead of a riddle a rider with a bomb planted in his skull. This is in Bleak Island. Yo! Yo! It doesn't take much to tame a cat. Make them wear this, and then call the bat. Oh! Friends of the Wings, though not as wealthy, their memorial ward keeps Gotham healthy. Healthy. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I just realized that the thing is gonna is the that the camera is gonna say you you've recorded enough time at, in one sitting, so I may have to pause in a bit. Oh, this was in uh, Magani Island. This was in Bleak Island. A natural cure for scarecrow's doom. <laughs> Your savior's gone, but it's still in bloom. The Prince of Gotham sits high in his tower. Yet this picture recalls a happier hour. Happy hour! Happy hour. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to! Boy, if you don't! The League of Attack has stuck blades through hearts. Like now they impale each other's hearts. Why does that sound like Zass? I feel like I got a Zass vibe out of it. Are you suffering from a mental split? Take out the trash before you defend it. Take out the trash. Yo, I ain't gonna. Yo. Yo, the trash ain't here! Island. A million dollar home for a spoiled child. His parents are dead, but his parties are wild. Wild. Mmm. An ancient order, lost from power, is zoomed. And their patron saint is here in tomb. Bruh. You know, unlike the Joker and Mr. Freeze and that, you have Calendar Man. I think I just thought of Calendar Man. Yo, that's Calendar Man, man. Easy, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze is the, is in this riddle. This is this is so Mr. Freeze. But yeah, and considering that Mr. Freeze is kind of more so like a tragic anti-hero, rather than a villain. Because he seemed to be portrayed as that in, uh, 
in Arkham City, and then I think in a recent episode for uh for I think the Harley Quinn in that, he actually you know had a more endearing uh, portrayal of kind of teaching Harley about what love really is, and it's super sweet. Because, you know, like when Anakin loves his wife, um, even despite the problematic things he's done, um, later on, that's like with, uh, Victor Fries, a.k.a. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze dearly loves his wife. He's a bird, but the- He's a bird! He's a bird! He's a bird! <laughs> Why did I have to make that joke? Because every time you hear that, I think he's a bird. That's like what you do with a uh, Falcon and Hawkeye in Marvel. Oops. Roll up, roll up. When a song is strange, this poor sign professor is clearly deranged. Deranged. Cute. Okay, stag airships. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, chill them out! Sounds like Zass. No dark night. Dag's head is no figment. It's just lacking the usual figment. No 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 night. A visual artist with burning ambition. True he made movies before his ignition. Oh, and that is Vanessa Studios. Yeah, and this is in Stag Enterprises airships. Okay. You, a father eater, don't make me laugh. You overwork and break your staff. Okay, then. She and her love are no longer together. She'll keep the flames burning forever and ever. Sounds like Harley. Even though we knew from day one that her, uh, like, fam, her th her uh, lover is abusive to her. Or who she thought was his lover. But yeah, he's abusive. He does not love her. Okay, next episode, I will be going on to the main mission. So I hope you guys enjoyed I I, I thought I thought I was going to have to pause it soon, but apparently I don't have to. <laughs> okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed that intermission episode because next time we will go in, we are gonna be going straight for the action. Hope you guys enjoyed that and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys! <laughs>